Okay, so question 51, leak code, end queens. The end queens puzzle is the problem of placing end queens on an end by end chessboard such that no two queens attack each other. So we're given an integer n, return all distinct solutions to the n queens puzzle. You may return the answer in any order. Each solution contains a distinct board configuration of end queen placements where q and period both indicate a queen and empty space. So the most important part about this question is the output and what format it's in. So we've got strings containing periods indicating empty spaces and a Q to indicate a queen. This is going to become very important within the recursive backtracking function where we have to reformat this and I'll go through that in a bit. So let's move over into the explanation. So with this question, what we need to do is we need to place queens within each row such that the queens are not attacking each other in any position. Now a queen can go up, down, and diagonals. We need to account for this in our constraints. So we'll have some kind of is valid helper function that's going to check the columns and the diagonals. We don't need to check the rows because what we're doing to simplify it is to make sure that queen is on each row. And we're just going to loop through those rows because we know for a fact that two queens cannot be on the same row. So in order to work out how to calculate a negative diagonal and a positive diagonal, we need to look at the indices of the rows and the columns. So a positive diagonal. So at this point here, we have three and zero. At this point, we have two and one. At this point, we have one and two. And at this point, we have zero and three. What do we need to do across these in order to keep them constant? We need to add them together. So this indicates the positive diagonals. Now let's do the same for the negative diagonals and work out how to calculate those. So here, here, we have zero and zero. We have one and one, two and two, three and three. If we add these up, like we did with the positive diagonals, we're gonna get different values. Here we have zero, here we have two, here we have four, here we have six. So we can't do that. So instead, what we'll do is we'll subtract them. Zero minus zero is zero, one minus one is zero, 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 3 is 0. So to work out the negative diagonals, it's R minus C. So now we have those constraints, we can create that is valid helper function. So firstly, we'd create that kind of recursive call. We'd start looping through. So we check to see if we can place Q1 here. We can because there are no conflicts. There's no attacking queens anywhere else on the board. So we go to the next row. So we check, can queen 2 go here? No, we have an attacking queen. Can queen 2 go here? No, we have an attacking queen. Can queen two go here? Yes. So we leave queen two there and we move on to the next row. Can queen three go here? No, we have an attacking queen. Can queen three go here? No, we have an attacking queen. Can queen three go here? No, and it can't go here either. So this is the point where we need to backtrack. We need to clean up our recursive call. So we need to remove q2 from this position and we need to place it at the next position in line. There is no attacking queen, so it can go there. Then we repeat the process. So queen three, can it go here? No, can it go here? Yes, it can. Queen four, can it go here? No, it can't. Can it go here? No, it can't. Can it go here? No, can it go here? No. So we need to backtrack again. Q3, we need to remove that. We need to place it next along. Can't go there, and it can't go here. So again, we need to backtrack. We need to go back to the previous one. Q2 can go no further along this row. So we go back to Q1 and we reposition Q1 next along. Q1 goes here. So Q2, can Q2 go here? No. Can it go here? No. Can it go here? No. Can it go here? Yes, Q2 can go there. Q3, can Q3 go in position one? Yes, it can. Q4, Q4 can't go here because there is an attacking queen here. Q4 can't go here but it can go here. And we are now in the last row. So we are at, and now with this question, what we need to do is we need to push this into a result array and reformat it so that it is all string values. So we'll add that into results. We'll create a copy of it because we still need to use this board to check for any other solutions. So I won't bore you with the rest of it, but the whole idea is these are going to be removed again. Q1 is going to move over and then we're going to repeat the process and the result is going to be two separate boards that are mirror images of each other. Okay, so that's enough for the explanation now. I think we should jump into the code and see how it's implemented. 
So firstly, we have an example here where n is equal to one. Let's just solve that straight away. So if n length is equal to one, we can return an array with q as a string. So with this solution, a really efficient way of looking to see if the column or either diagonals have an attacking queen is to use sets to store this information. So col is equal to a new set. Positive diagonal is going to equal to a new set. Neg diagonal is going to equal a new set also. We need to have a result array to store the results in. And we need to create a two by two board that we can eventually manipulate, add values into, and then push into results. And the way we do this in JavaScript, or one way we do this in JavaScript is like this. And this will create a 2D array where each value has a period in it as a string. So the bulk of the question is going to rely on a number of different helper functions. So first thing we need to check if the current position is valid. We're gonna take in row and column and we're going to check if column doesn't have an attacking queen. We're also going to do the same for positive and negative diagonals. And we need to check whether it has R plus C, as we stated in the example. A negative diagonal is the opposite, R minus C. So that's checking if the position is valid. We also need to add the queen. So we need to add the queen to a position. Again, we're going to take in row and column. We're going to add column to the col. We're going to add the position to positive diagonal. And we're going to do the same for negative diagonal as well. And finally, we need to add the letter Q to the board at RC. Now we need to remove the queen. And this is for the cleanup. So the recursive call is going to have backtracking in it. And in order to backtrack, we need to clean up the board. So we need to actually remove the queen from the board so that we can check other possible solutions. And when resetting the board at RC, we need to equal it to the period. Okay, and that should be it for the helper functions. Now we just need to create the recursive backtracking function. So remember backtracking is just a recursive function. Uh, again, we're going to be using DFS in this approach, but backtracking just means we're, we're going to be popping off. So we're going to be cleaning up afterwards in order to check all other potential solutions. So function recurse, we're going to be recursing over the rows. So if we call it passing in zero as our starting row, Inside all recursive calls as a template, we have a base case and a recurrence relation. Okay, so if row is equal to n, we need to push into results. Now this is the most important part because we need to create a copy of the board because we're going to be using the original board to check for all the other solutions. And then we need to map over that board and join with a string. Create a copy of the board. So we spread out the board, map over the board, grab the row and join via a string. And that will give us valid output that we can carry out the recursion. So we need to loop through the columns. So column is equal to zero, column is less than n because it's an n by n board. Increment the columns. We need to check if the board is valid. So we can use our helper function now. If is valid, passing in row and col. We can add the queen now. Add queen helper function as in row and col. Now we need to carry out the recurrence. So recurse. We're going to pass in the function. So recurse and increment the row. And last but not least, we need to backtrack. So we need to remove the queen and clean up. And finally at the end, we can return res. So let's give this a go and see if it's worked. Okay, it's been accepted, let's submit it. And there you have it. Now time and space complexity 
uh, time complexity is O n factorial, base complexity is O n squared, where we've used extra memory for the three sets to store the board state, and also the recursive call stack. However, to keep it at this complexity, space used for the output does not count towards the space complexity.